We have a special guest today, Sarah Nofke. She's the award-winning, best-selling author of The Lucidite and The Reverians, just to name a few. So let's welcome Sarah to the show. Hello, Sarah. It's great to have you back as a guest. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. Well, to start off, I'm going to read the back cover of Suspended. When a stranger joins the cast, the Vagabond Circus, a circus that is run by the dream travelers and features real magic, mysterious events start to happen. The once orderly grounds of the circus became riddled with hidden threats, and the ringmaster realizes not only are his circus and its magic at risk, but also his very life. Vagabond Circus caters to the skeptics. Without skeptics, it would close its doors. This is because Vagabond Circus runs for two reasons, and only two reasons. First and foremost, to provide the lost and lonely dream travelers a place to be illustrious. And secondly, to show the non-believers that there is still magic in the world. If they believe, then they care. And if they care, then they don't destroy. They stop the small abuse that day by day breaks down humanity's spirit. If Vagabond Circus makes one skeptic believe in magic, then they halt the cycle just a little bit. And they allow a little more love into this world. That's Dr. Dave Radon's mission. And that's why this ringmaster recruits. That's why he directs. That's why he puts on a show that makes people question their beliefs. He wants the world to believe in magic once again. I will tell you, Sarah, I love this book, and I cannot wait for us to read the rest of the series. The re- characters really come alive for me. Why did you pick a circus? Well, thank you so much for that. I, um, I'm really proud of this series. And to tell you the truth, I never would have pictured in a million years that I would be writing a series about the circus. It's just not something that ever occurred to me to do something that was um, this fantastical, you know, universe. Mm-hmm. But I was inspired. I took my daughter, who was four years old, um, to the circus in last year. And during the trapeze act, her face just was so alive with inspiration. And her, her eyes were dazzling. And I just thought, you know what, I need to capture this magic and put it into a book. Hmm. And because I write about dream travelers and people with unique abilities, I left the circus and my immediate thought was, what if there was a circus but there was no smoke and mirrors? All of the performers had special superpowers. And so everything you saw was actually real. And that's, that's when the Vagabond Circus was born. <laughs> that is so awesome. Did you ever go to circus as a child? You know what? Ironically, I didn't. My mother was adamantly against circuses because when I was growing up, a lot of them included animals, and she just really didn't feel comfortable with that. And so we, we actually never went, but my circus doesn't include animals. There's no animals. There's no clowns. I took the inspiration. I was a a gymnast growing up, and I performed a lot and trained a lot with this uh, family of acrobats. Mm. And um, they had a traveling circus, and they would come to uh, my school, and we would work together. And I would would go to their house, and they had lots of circus um, equipment and things. And so that's, that's where I think a lot of this was born from. The, the acrobat influence of uh, my childhood. Well, that's pretty cool. Now, this is a race of people that have certain gifts and abilities. So explain to our listeners what dream traveling involves. Absolutely. All of my books are set in the universe of dream travelers. And so dream travelers are a special race, and they can go anywhere with their consciousness. So think of like out-of-body experiences. That's mm-hmm. really what they do. When they go to sleep, they can go to any place, any time. And also, dream travelers have a special ability, like telekinesis, telepathy, clairvoyance, um, you name it. If it's a psychic type of ability, they can have it, and they can have more than one. So they are an extremely unique type of person. Gotcha. So when they are dream traveling, and a person gets hurt while dream traveling, will the person be hurt in reality? Great question. And yes, the answer is yes. Because for me, whenever I was constructing this book world, I thought that whatever happens to a dream traveler needs to affect their body because the connection between mind and body is so strong. So 
I mean, definitely, if you're in a dream travel and something happens to you, it's going to affect your physical body. Ooh. Hmm. And uh, those are the rules that we're following. Yep. And they better be careful doing that kind of stuff, too, I guess. Tell us (laughs) about, excuse me, tell us about the ringmaster. The ringmaster for the Vagabond Circus, his name is Dr. Dave Radin. And you mentioned um, a lot about him in the synopsis. And so Dave definitely has this mission where he wants to recruit the lost and lonely dream travelers. He wants to pull out their amazing talent and make them great and inspire in the process people to uh, believe in magic again. So that was his ultimate purpose. But Dave started this because he was a, a psychiatrist and he would meet people in his practice who were just, they were just lost but not with any good reason. And I think we can all relate to this, but sometimes we just get into the monotony of life and we lose the magic. And so Dave decided that he wasn't really helping people anymore in his practice, that the best thing to do was to create a venture that would really bring inspiration and magic and happiness to people's lives. So that's where the Vagabond Circus was born for him. But it wasn't at first very successful because he had um, his first troop and everything went wrong. And he later learned it was because he didn't have any rules set up. He was just this guy with a dream, and he really wanted to inspire. But when a lot of performers get together, there's a lot of ego and there's a lot of problems. So we learn a little bit about that in the first book and then more about it as the series goes on. But the important thing to know is that there's two and only two rules at Vagabond Circus. And the first is that everybody respects each other. And the second is that nobody dates because that just will lead to lots of drama. So that's that's the ringmaster in a nutshell. Now that I know that poses a problem, or, you know, there's several characters in the book that have feelings for each other, or they want to, but out of respect for the ringmaster, Dave, they do not go past a certain point. And I like that, that they, uh, they have his, um, Dave, earn their respect like that, to, you know, you know, because sneaking around and doing all that, uh, they respect him for that. Um, so, who is Finley, and why is he following the Vagabond Circus? Finley is one of the main characters, and we meet him at the very beginning of the book, and he is spying on the Vagabond Circus. He's a drifter of sorts, or so we think. It's, uh, everything surrounding Finley is very mysterious. And he's spying on the circus, and then he convinces Dave to give him a role in the circus, and he becomes the star performer. And we don't really know why he's following the circus. We don't know if his reasons are nefarious or if they're good. And what we do know is that he's covering something up, and he's got incredible abilities, and he's a super smart character, but there's something that we just don't know about him. And um, Finley is, is going to be one of those, those characters throughout the series that I think the reader will go back and forth on. And that's okay, you know? I mean, we don't have to know our characters all the way, and it's sometimes better if we don't until, until we do. Yeah. Hey, I was worried uh, when, I, when I was reading that, when he was in the shadows and everything, I'm like, okay, what's he up to? That it doesn't look good, you know, it doesn't look on the up and up. So <laughs> now, who is Fanny and what does she do? Finney's another character. This story is really filled with a lot of different characters. Um, it's a huge cast, and that's, that's very different from mm-hmm. some of my other books. But that was really important because if you have a circus, you have a lot of characters. And Fanny is one of the most important because she is both the healer for the circus, and, of course, circuses are going to need healers. Um, in the dream travel world, there are not doctors or nurses um, for the most part. There are healers because that's their psychic ability. And then... Also, just as important, is she is the circus's nanny because Dr. Dave Radin uh, recruits and he goes into orphanages and he finds dream traveler children and he, he um, brings them to the circus because that's, that's what his mission is, is to rescue and to uh, make better lives for people. So she is the nanny to these children that come to Vagabond Circus and a dream traveler can't dream travel or use a psychic ability until they're of a certain age. It's just, it's, it's like they hit puberty and then it all comes forward. So before then, Nanny, Fanny takes care of these children and 
she's just one of those characters you want to hug. We just love Fanny from the very beginning. She's she's tall, muscular. She's got a, a beautiful southern accent, and then she's got a laugh that makes people smile. I had a lot of fun constructing Fanny because, uh, you know, she's, she's a good person. Yeah. I saw that she uh, really takes good care of the of the children there. Um, let's see. I'm thinking of something here. Um, how does he know they're dream travelers, the children? That's a really good question. And, you know, because my series are all connected, I had discussed this at different times. And I don't know that we actually learn about that in book one. But dream travelers, they operate at a different frequency. They, they're... they're um, frequency registers differently. And then there's people, so there's technology that helps um, him to identify dream travelers, Mm -hmm. but also Fanny goes with him, and they they present themselves as a couple who's, of course, looking to adopt a child, and, you know, they have very, they, they have all sorts of ways to persuade people using psychic abilities, and because they're dream travelers, they have certain advantages. But um, Fanny's uh, ability as a healer also helps her to recognize those energies. And like I said, we don't dis- we don't discover that really in the first book, but uh, get more into it as you get into the second book, Paralyzed, and the third book, Released. Oh, nice. Okay, the next character is Zuma. Is that how you say it? Zuma, that's right, like the yeah. beach. So she's the star of the circus at the moment, and she's like a daughter to Dave because she must be had she had in the book she's been there a long time. Explain to our listeners how come she became to came to the circus and her relationship to Dave. Where her where are her parents? Good question, and um, she's also known as the girl of stone. And, and Zuma is a really interesting character. She's very flawed. She's she's very um, she, she's she's emotionless in a lot of ways, but. We learn a lot more about her and how she came to the circus, and we, we, we start to learn about it in this book, and then it really, it really becomes clear in book two. So Dr. Dave Radin is a family friend to her family, and unlike most who came to Vagabond Circus because they were orphans or they were homeless or you know whatever the case might have been, she came from a good family, but she's always been extremely unhappy and hard to please. And so her family, who was connected with Dr. Dave Radin, decided that if she ever wanted to, she could, you know, move over to the circus and, and have a performance, uh, have, have a, a role there. And so that's the decision that they make. And so she's, she's kind of an outcast in that way. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's interesting because she's an outcast because she actually came from a family instead of the other way around, where the other ones are all rejects from society in some way. So that's that's a little bit about Zima. Ah, so fascinating. And we don't want to tell every th- everybody everything, so we'll take a short commercial break. And when we come back, we have a surprise for our listeners. Did you know 26 million Americans have kidney disease and most don't know it? The day I was diagnosed, I didn't know what to do. I called the National Kidney Foundation, and the young lady who answered stayed on the phone with me and walked me through step by step. She, too, was surviving kidney disease. and She showed me there could be life after kidney disease. Visit the National Kidney Foundation at kidney.org. Now you know. Welcome back to the Charlie Checker Show. This is Charlie Checkers, and we're with our guest, Sarah Nofke, and the treat is today that she is going to be reading to our listeners out of Suspended. We are ready, Sarah. Great. Well, I'm going to start with Suspended at the very beginning and try to get you all interested. So we start with the prologue. There are those who come to judge the circus, and then there are those who come to experience it. 
The latter go home satisfied. The former go home full of scrutinizing accusations. Those who experience the circus, taking it in and allowing themselves to be awed, have a richness built into their lives afterwards, almost like they've gained an extra day to their existence. Those who observe seem to have lost a day. They're the ones who tear down sandcastles. They're the ones who say clouds are just clouds when they are irrefutably in the shape of unicorns. These skeptics are the people the vagabond circus caters to. The circus would shut their doors to the joyful and starry-eyed if their business didn't keep it running. The vagabond circus runs for two reasons and only two reasons. First and foremost, to give the lost and lonely dream traveler a place to be great. And secondly, to show the non-believers that there's still magic in the world. If they believe, then they care. If they care, then they don't destroy. They stop the small abuse that day by day breaks down humanity's spirit. If the vagabond circus makes one person believe, then they halt the cycle just a little bit. They allow a little more love into this world. That's Dave Radin's mission. That's why he recruits. That's why he directs. That's why he puts on a show that makes people question their beliefs. He wants the world to believe in magic once again. And yet, what his patrons witness is real. Real people doing real things. Things that are inconceivable to most, but real nonetheless. That's because Dave recruits only dream travelers, people who can do what most can't, unique people. They aren't magical, but to those who don't know the difference, they are an inspiration. They appear magical. However, what most believe to be real magic is only the extraordinary, which defines the Vagabond Circus completely. Chapter 1. Rain pelted the big top gliding down the tent and gathering in puddles on the muddy ground. The crew had worked throughout the night to reinforce the oversized tent from the winds and the storms. The earth it was bolted to was threatening to melt away, sending the bright green and blue tent into a mound of chaos. The Vagabond Circus had been on the road for three weeks, and this was its first night in Seattle. Tomorrow, the city's residents would have the opportunity to witness a show that people in Vancouver called Unbelievable, Unreal, and more than a trick of smoke and mirrors. The critics were speechless, as they were every year when the Vagabond Circus came through town. There was little to criticize and more than enough to show the overwhelmed senses. No one understood half of what they saw at Vagabond Circus, but still, they never looked away. And yet, in this year's show, there was something missing. The 50 people who came together to put on the show knew it. The ringmaster, Dave Radin, knew it. And the one person who could fill in the missing gap knew it after watching the show in Vancouver. But the audience had no clue there was anything lacking in the Vagabond Circus. They were ecstatic, leaving the big top with smiles that wouldn't fade for hours. They had seen what they thought were tricks, not realizing everything about this circus was real. In the shadows, a boy stood under an old oak tree, only partially protected from the heavy monsoon. He watched in the dark as performers sprinted to their trailers. They were intent on getting dry and rested before the sun came up, marking a day of three shows. The boy was wet, but he didn't care. He was exhausted from hitchhiking and stealing rides on the train from Vancouver, but he was here. He'd followed Vagabond Circus, and soon he'd be ready for the next part of his plan. Chapter 2 Steam rose off the flame-lit lantern when slanted rain trespassed into the open flap of the tent. Dave Radin could have had his office in a trailer, like the ones he and most of the people in Vagabond Circus lived in. Instead, he chose to erect a small one-mass version of the big top for his professional space. It was large enough for a round table and a few chairs and decorated in the same neon green and till blue as the big top which towered beside it. Dave could have also lit his office tent with the same electricity that powered the thousands of lights in the neighboring Big Top, but he enjoyed the charm of firelight. Dr. Radin enjoyed the charm of many things that had died out due to technology. As the ringmaster of Vagabond Circus and also its founder, he was in essence before his time. Open your eyes, Dave, a slender man said, jabbing his finger at a piece of paper lying on the table. Look at the numbers. They don't lie. Numbers may not lie, but they only tell half of the story, Dave said, leaning back in his chair and folding his hands over his rounded belly. Well, the only story I'm interested in is the 
one there telling me, Titus said, tapping his finger repeatedly on the stack of figures, detailing the hole the vagabond circus was quickly sliding into. If you care so much about this circus, then I encourage you to take this all more seriously. I don't just care about this circus. I have faith in it, Dave said, his voice even in a strange contrast to that of the gentleman standing over him red-faced. We've been through slumps and we're going to weather this one. A smile pricked up the corners of his thin lips, a glint of hope in his eyes as he gazed out the open flap of the tent. This storm will pass, just as the one outside will. Things will get better, just as the sun will rise and dry up the rain. Oh, hell, would you stop with the metaphors? Now really is the time, Titus said, snapping his fingers in front of Dave's face. The seated man was almost lost in the daze as he watched the rain shift from a downpour to a steady sprinkle. We need to charge more for tickets. We need to expand the show, go bigger, sell merchandise, have booths. Titus leaned down low, finally gaining Dave's attention, and when he spoke, his mouth hardly parted for his words. We need to evolve and stop our operating like we did 20 years ago. Don't you get it? Dave shook his head of short brown hair, unleashing the water, clinging to its ends. Titus stepped back suddenly and shielded his face with a raised elbow from the spray of droplets. When the taller man lowered his arm, the shorter man stood, a mischievous look in his small, light-colored eyes. Evolution isn't all that it's cracked up to be, Dave said. It works for mammals and birds and fish, but in my opinion, it isn't suited for all organizations, or in this case, the Vagabond Circus. Your opinion is wrong. Titus threw his hands into the air, his fingertips almost knocking into the low part of the ceiling overhead. Dave took one large step, his short legs really reaching to close the space between him and the, old, the other man in only one stride. He threw his chin up and stared with bold eyes at the man who easily stood a foot over him. I value your opinion, but at the end of the day, my opinion, whether right or wrong, is the only one that counts. Is that clear? Titus didn't say a word, only stepped back and roughly shook his head, his lips pressed together in a hard line. I think we're done here tonight. Dave said, his voice cordial once more. He turned and made for the open flap of the tent. Please, close up, would you? And I think that that is a good place to stop. That was should intrigue our listeners enough to want to read this fascinating book and the rest of the series as well. So, Sarah, tell us what's next for you. Well, currently, I am working on another series. The first book, Rin, the Man Behind the Monster, is already out. And the second book comes out on May 15th. It's called Rin, the uh, God's Little Monster. And uh, Rin is a fantastic character, much loved by my readers. He's a snarky Brit who will give you life-saving advice while also criticizing you. He's um, super intelligent super talented, and has a ginormous ego. So uh, my readers have a lot of fun with him because he's not your average protagonist. Anyway, um, the second book comes out this weekend, and the third book I'm currently halfway done with and looking to release in the summer sometime, hopefully around July 15th. So that's keeping me really busy. Awesome. So where can we find out more about you? Our listeners want to know about that, too. Absolutely. They can go to my website and from there find links to my social media, Amazon, buy autographed paperback, Kindle, audiobooks, um, anything can be found there. And that is www.saranofsky.com. That's S-A-R-A-H. N as in Nancy, O double F as in Frank, K-E dot com. And just go there and you can connect with me on all of the social media or sign up for my newsletter. Awesome. Okay, well, that's all the time we have today. So on behalf of all our listeners, I want to thank you, Sarah, for being with us here today. I want to thank all our listeners and sponsors for their support, because without them, this programming would not be possible. And remember to sing like no one's listening and dance like no one's watching. Goodbye. (laughs) 